number 11th ranked UFC women's strawweight Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie, thank you so much for the time. Hi, thanks for having me. We will take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Hey, Mackenzie, it's good to see you again. Yay, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> I know, you can just hear me, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I want to start, this is your second fight with the team at RVCA. Obviously, you've had a lot more time with them this time. Just what difference has that made with uh, just going into the fight? It's making the biggest difference, you know? It's like one of the reasons I was so excited and I really want to fight in December, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in 2021 with the COVID, if things are going to close or they're going to get better. So I was like, man, I'm training every day. I'm seeing such a big um, evolution on my game, uh, my striking with coach, because he's in California and you know, all my dad lives in Arizona. So, you know, I'm training more my boxing than my jujitsu, you know, and I'm like, man, I'm seeing such a big um, evolution and everything. So I really want to, you know, try to take advantage of this momentum that I have from my last two fights um advantage of you know my training with him and how much you know potential he's showing me that i have so i really i'm really like, happy and i'm excited to see um uh, if i can show you everyone on this fight the interviews i've seen with you you're clearly very excited to show that work i can really hear that in your voice i see you on instagram though and i see you are still rolling with your dad obviously megaton is well known how does he fit in? Because I'm assuming he's always there to help you with your jujitsu, but how does he fit in with your other coaches and all the other work they want to do with you? Yeah, my dad, he's so, he's a, he's a great guy. He's so charismatic, you know, and it's, it's funny because like he lives in Arizona and he's always competing and he's still competing like till today. You know, I think he competes in two weekend or next weekend or in two weeks from now. So it's kind of like he comes in, um, when he comes, we just like train jujitsu together, like train, train, train the time he's with me. And then he goes back and then I can and then I go and keep training my boxing or wrestling, whatever I need to do. So I think the coach like it, you know, because it's not like this mix of, no, you need to stay standing up. You need to stay stand. You know, going down to the. He's not like you know really trying to push. He's never trying to make a strategy for me or anything like that. He's just like keeping me of how we were on the beginning that I had so much success. You know, during my whole jiu-jitsu career, and you know, obviously now doing my 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 MMA career you know, with the submissions and everything. So he just kind of always keeps my mind um, grounded and always rem remember me about my roots and always kicking my butt all the time beating me up you know so that's good you know i know there's no woman that can fight me that's going to be worse than my dad you know he was like puts the pressure and everything and that's that's what i need you know now that sounds like true love right there <laughs> yeah. that's great. um i want to ask you because obviously verna's solid in jiu-jitsu i don't need to tell you you're obviously very decorated in jiu-jitsu for people who are not as smart how would you describe the difference between your grappling and hers? Uh, it's funny because I think everyone's trying to find like this big, um, big difference, you know, in the grappling and things like that. You know, I think, um, I think her grappling is a lot like, you know, kind of pressure and, you know, passing and things like that. And people see me, you know, doing like these crazy leg locks and arm bars and kind of a little bit more looser and stuff like that. But Man, I'm I'm a complete fighter, you know, Jiu Jitsu fighter, been fighting. You know, I think people don't never don't realize like I have this pressure passing too, you know. I've had to fight the absolute divisions, you know, my whole Jiu Jitsu career. Um, so I really think I'm more complete fighter, you know, I'm doing everything like from pressure to pass like her, all the way to doing, you know, beating bowling, going on the legs and the feet and jumping all these triangles on my bodies and stuff like that, you know, the loose the loose game too, you know. Um, even you can say like heel hooks and things like that that we're not used to doing in jiu-jitsu pure jiu-jitsu tournaments you know so i really think uh the biggest difference is hers is maybe a little bit more um one dimensional you know um that is effective it's it's really effective especially when you have a ground and pound and stuff like that but um i think people don't realize that i i know i know that style too you know and that's part of my my jiu-jitsu jiu game too you know is just to be well round and to be the best in the world Hey, thank you, Mackenzie. Good luck. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Chester Luo with PP Sport. Mackenzie, how are you? Good. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Uh, I'm Chester from PP Sport China. And first of all, I would like to tell you that you already have a lot of fans among Chinese Jiu Jitsu practitioners and including me and we all hope you can get the victory this saturday 
Oh, thank you so much. I my first ADCC that I was invited to was going to be in Beijing, and I had my um, ACL tear like three weeks before, so I was never able to go to compete in China. You know, but I hope to go there one day and and you know train there and maybe meet you guys would be a pleasure. Yeah. So my first question is: Before you became a pro MMA fighter, you were already the uh, pound for pound number one woman. A jiu-jitsu athlete, and I would like to ask you that you're right now you're fighting for your, uh, you're fighting in uh, MMA. You are fighting for yourself or fighting for jiu-jitsu? Um, that's a good good question. Um, I think I'm fighting for jiu-jitsu. You know, I I went into the MMA um, for that. You know, for jiu-jitsu, and the more like my last my last two. Fights after my pregnancy, you know, was two submission performance of the night bonus, um, and I think I'm really just trying to show how jiu-jitsu is effective, especially like when you mix um, punches and everything. So my goal always was to show bring jiu-jitsu to a big platform, like you know Damian Maya, like Hoist Gracie, uh, you know, like all these all these jiu-jitsu fighters, you know, who really show the UFC and be like the woman woman uh, inspiration for the jiu-jitsu and make jiu-jitsu even more famous than than more famous as possible okay and my next question is since the achievement you had made in jiu-jitsu and you're naturally attract more attention when you're a switch to mma and your opponent uh gender roba had mentioned that uh the victory over you will bring her more visibility so uh would this kind of attention be a kind of pressure for you i don't think it's a pressure you know i think um definitely it's exciting you know and i think fighting verna because she's a jiu-jitsu fighter too um uh, it's gonna be able to give a lot of opportunities for to show a little bit my striking you know um of course i don't my plan is like to win the fight striking, you know, but I definitely think it's going to give a lot more opportunities to show and maybe uh, hurt her a little bit on my striking. So the jujitsu will be even easier. Um, but I think it's going to be a great fight and it's it's good to it. If I beat her too, it's going to show um, it's going to help my name too on the jujitsu as the jiu best jujitsu fighter in, in women's jujitsu fighter in the UFC, you know, so I think we're both in the same in the same boat, you know, I think a lot of my following, if she beats me, will follow to her and really give her a lot of respect and stuff like that. But I think the same way, more for me in the MMA world, uh, she has, I think, 16 or 17 fights. Uh, if I beat her, uh, especially with the Jiu-Jitsu, you know, it'll, it'll help bring my name a little bit more like, yeah, okay, she's one of the best Jiu-Jitsu in the MMA world. Okay, thank you for your time and good luck to your Saturday. Yeah, thank you so much. Bye. We will take the next set of questions from Ryan McCarthy with Low Kick MMA. Hey, Mackenzie, how are you? Hey, Ryan, nice to see you or hear you. Nice see you. <laughs> yeah. um, so I want to see thing how you know how is the preparation for Verna? I, I know she's um you know she has a unique skin set uh you know difficult to prepare for for sure. And you're both you're both ranked fighters. So how has it been preparing for someone like Verna? Yeah, I trained a lot of my striking, you know, I trained my jiu-jitsu too, for sure, just to make sure I'm um, on point and everything's clean and my my timing is good, um, since, you know, that's both of our strengths is the ground. So I definitely figured we're going to both be on the ground sooner or later in the fight. And, you know, it's just going to be who who's thinking faster, who has the better um, better options, you know, the better transitions. But I trained a lot of my striking for this uh, fight, you know, I. I think we'll make the takedowns and if I can hurt her a little bit on the striking and have a little bit more opportunities to show like my weakness against her weakness and show that my weakness is not not my weakness anymore, you know, I think um, that that was kind of my goal for this camp, you know, just be prepared for everything and take advantage of them train. I have my whole fight camp with Coach Perillo um, on this phone. So really, there's a big been a big, um, a big change in my level of my striking and I think we're going to be able to show this uh, that on this fight for sure and then kind of going off that i mean if you were um you know when you beat verna you know ranked fighter you know do you have a name in the top 10 that that you're targeting after this fight no name in particular a lot of things are gonna in 2021 with with in between the top 10 i think a lot of the girls are gonna um fight each 
you know, so um, I don't really want to say surname now and then it changes and and that maybe a certain number, a certain girl was number, I don't know, five and then goes to seven or something like that, you know. Um, but definitely 2021, I want to try to pick a little bit more of my fights to really get me one step closer to the to the belt, you know, not just fight anyone for any time, for anything. You know, I really want to fight, you know, top fighters and show that I have the level to be the champion, you know, and I don't want to get there like by just fighting anyone. I want to get there by proving myself. And I think the best way to prove is by fighting the, the top contenders. For sure. Well, thank you for your time, Mackenzie. I really look forward to your fight on Saturday and best of luck. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Augusto Niaz Gay with Somos MMA. Are you, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, Mackenzie, my, my, my first question is, uh, I, I don't know if you if you heard what Myrna has said, but she thinks that a win over you will make her more notorious for the fans because she thinks you already are a star of the sport. So I want to ask you, what do you feel when people say that? Do you consider yourself a star or, or it sounds crazy for you? Um... No, I, I don't think I, I don't see myself as a star yet. You know, I definitely see potential for me to be a great champion, you know, um, multiple champion, you know, things like that. But um, I feel like I need to prove myself, you know, so the fact that they have people that see me there already, you know, I say like, man, that's that's good. You know, that's good. I think that's why a lot of people accept the fights with me. You know, I think because I came into MMA with the whole jujitsu uh community supporting me you know with a big following with a big um family behind me you know um i think that and jiu-jitsu is i think really effective in mma you know so i think to be dangerous in that that not a lot of people are good at jiu-jitsu in, in in the women's division you know it can take me far and so i'm i'm happy i'm it's really nice for her to say that you know and i don't feel any pressure or anything like that you know i f i feel like i need to prove myself you know because you know, I came from the pregnancy, I took one year off, you know, and I'm trying to get back in and really show people like, hey, I want that respect, you know, that I am a star, you know, not that oh, I'm just one more girl. I, I'm looking for that respect that that she she said, you know. Yes, I understand you. And Mackenzie, how do you prepare a fight against someone who's very good at the grappling department like you? And how do you neutralize her style? Yeah, uh, it's funny because like I for this camp I trained my jiu-jitsu, you know, just to make sure my timing, my transitions are is like, but I'm confident, you know, on, on my jiu-jitsu. I think her passing and and pressure and stuff like that. And I fought girls like that all the time. I do that type too, you know. May, even though I don't show too much in MMA because I've submit before, you know, like submit on, um, you know, with leg locks or, you know, I that that style too. I've done that whole life, you know, pressure past two and things like that. So uh, I really trained a lot of my striking for this fight, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I don't want to be on the ground with her in the first minute, you know, I think we're both strong we're both um dry you know we're not sweaty or bloody or anything um i really trying to get a little bit tired get her a little bit tired and then to be a little bit like cleaner the submissions you know i think she's going to be good defense uh good pressure so i don't want to be feeling that like in the first minute you know i really want to show all my training my striking that i've been doing and i think it's a good good fight for me to, sh to show this and everything i've been working on oh and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Gracias. We will take the next set of questions from Pablo Santa Maria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Hi, Mackenzie. Talking Hi. to you again. Yes, you too. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, in the post of Coach Marilla on Instagram, your boxing is looking sharp. Who do you think it would be an important key in this fight? Yes, definitely. I think this is a perfect fight uh for me to show my striking uh my boxing you know because it's our it's her weakness you know and her strength and her jiu-jitsu like mine you know so i've been training so 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 much i really hope i get the opportunity to show it um and i think this is going to be a great fight for me to be able to i don't know knock out or 
knock her down and then submit or at least be able to show that my level, my striking is is getting better, you know? I get it. So uh, she's also very good on the ground. She talks very good. Do you think your jiu-jitsu is better than her jiu-jitsu or you have the same level? Yeah, I, th I definitely, I think my jiu-jitsu is more com complete, um, you know, more rounded, well-rounded and um, uh, more, not effective. I think her, her style is like, is a little bit more basic, but that's ex uh, very effective in MMA, you know, um, but it's nothing like I never, I've never seen before. I never, I've fought girls like that all the time, you know, so I definitely think, um, I think it's harder for her to fight someone like me than for me to fight someone like her, you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your prediction for the fight, my kids? Uh, I think we're going to stay standing up a little bit, you know, both of us. Um, I think we're going to put on a great fight. I don't think it's going to be easy for either one of us. Uh, on the ground, I think it's going to be a lot of transitions from the bottom to the top to the back and things like that. But I think that uh hopefully i can get the submission on the end <laughs> okay I, I, I want to ask you because uh, your training partner cheeto is going to face jose aldo a legend of your country who you got mm -hmm. in that fight <laughs> ah it's it's gonna be a good fight you know um i know that both of them are training hard uh I don't know. I don't know who's gonna win. You know, I, I see I see Chiro training all the time. You know, and he's really focused and he's really hungry. So I think um, I think it's gonna be very dangerous. But I don't know. I don't know who will win. I'm I, I I'm really excited to see this fight. Okay, Karen, the first time I talked to you, Ecuadorian fans were very happy because you greet them. Would you like to send another message to your Ecuadorian fans? <laughs> to my Ecuadorian sense, <laughs> muchas gracias. Uh, thank you so much for all the support. I hope to go to Ecuador and visit you guys and train and surf too. You know, my husband we can surf. So uh, thank you guys so much, and I hope to that you guys enjoy the fight this weekend. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mackenzie, for your time and good luck. Thank you so much, muchas gracias. We will take the next set of questions from Stephen Morocco with MMA Fighting. Hey, Mackenzie. Um, just was curious, did the incident between your ex-coach and your husband make you rethink who you sort of let into your inner circle as a fighter? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. You know, I was like for me, I felt like almost almost so bad that I spent like one year and a half, you know, believing some things and going through some things that, you know, now I see like, man, that's not normal for for coaching and, and for fighters to go through. Um, it's really crazy and it's like, man, definitely gave me a different vision on, you know, my camps and just my life, you know, in general and my career, who I want near me and stay close and really who you open up to. And and it's it's really dangerous, you know, what we do is dangerous, you know, we get punched in the face, can break your nose, can ruin your career, you know, by knee surgeries or things like that, you know, so it's not, it's not like just, uh, you know, to give in the hands of people for ego or things like that, you know, you need to be like with real professionals and you need to feel good and, you know, a happy, you know, a happy fighter or a happy athlete, that's the best camp, you know, when you're happy with what you're doing and not, not having like a different battle in your mind and then a battle on the fight and then a battle you know in the family with their coaches you know it's that that's not normal so definitely uh made me think like two times and now i'm now i see like so much so much of evolution and and everything in my career so what led you to jason perillo was it his history or was it something else yeah it was definitely i had heard of him before you know and um Pat, you know, the, the owner of Ruka, I, I know he, he's known me since I'm a little baby, you know, from Jiu Jitsu. So, um, you know, I, I, I know he's like more private gym, you know, the Ruka. So I wasn't sure if, if Coach Pearl would want to train me. And I know that he's trained like such great fighters, Chris, BJ Penn, you know, who is a Jiu Jitsu guy. So I really like that, that BJ was Jiu Jitsu and, and Coach was able to, you know, to work with him to be champion, all these things. But I was kind of nervous, like, man, I hope that Coach will want to want to work with me, you know, I left, I left the lab and then I left this last um, gym, you know, I said, maybe he's going to think that I'm like a problem, problem ass fighter, you know, something like that. And he said like, okay, come in. Man, I'm so happy he did because 
like there's a reason why he's one of the best in the world you know it's like he really does make a big difference i talked to hobson gracie the other day and he said it gets exhausting going to new gyms because people look at his last name and they instantly want to that he's instantly a target do you experience the same thing mm, i uh, no i think a lot of the gym a lot of camps you know the lab was like more team you know so it was a lot of people and they had a lot of people in the ufc with big names you know and things like that so it was really just kind of one more and everyone was pushing me good and stuff like that um black house you know is kind of a little bit more team to like more than one fighters you know it, but i think i do better at private gyms you know i think this the ruka it's perfect you know because i can just go do my thing you know um train i see like cheeto over there i see you know between luke and everyone's kind of doing their own thing um and you can watch and really see what these like world champions are doing and like okay i see like cheetos in the gym i need to be in the gym too you know because that's that's how where i want to be you know i see luke's in the gym that's i need to go to you know so really pushes you to have these high level fighters but without that mix of everyone trying to kill you and all these things you know and stuff like that so um, I really like the gym, and I think the private private gym is kind of more the way to go for my my style, you know. For sure. My last question: um, You came into MMA as a specialist in, in one area. Um, what advice would you have for somebody like the boxer Clarissa Shields, who's trained so intensely in one area, and now she has to learn a new set of skills on this big stage? I think it just. Um you know, stay consistent, you know, it, I think for her who's starting now um, to be, you know, mixed martial arts, um, she, her boxing is going to take her a long way for sure, you know, but um, to not just train jiu-jitsu depending on who she fights, you know, like, oh, I'm going to fight a jiu-jitsu girl, so now I'll start jiu-jitsu, you know, start to train it from, from the beginning, you know, twice a week, um, you know, wrestling, the, the, her weaknesses, you know, because when I think she's going to go really long, just really far with her box, you know, but when, when it comes the day that she fights a jiu-jitsu girl, something she's going to be already prepared, you know, if she starts now and just always consistent and not get dismotivated, you know, when you can't punch, you know, it have to be like in a gi and things like that, you know. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. We will take our last set of questions from Omar Mert Savchi with S Sport. Hello, Mackenzie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Thanks, thanks. Mackenzie, <laughs> how many more wins do you think you need to earn for title shot? Mm, I think three more wins. <laughs> three more. Yeah. Okay. My other question, how does it feel to be a mother and a fighter? Oh, it's great. It's one of the best feelings ever, you know, because she's my biggest motivation, you know, and uh, my biggest uh, cheerleader, you know, she's always cheering for me all the time and to know that no matter the result, no matter um, the training, the hard training and everything we do, uh, she's there and it's like the true value is our family, you know, and in, in, on top of anything, you know, money or work or anything like that. So it's it's really great to be able to have that, you know, my daughter following me on this career, on my career and hopefully I can... I can be like inspiration for her and get the belt and be a mom champion and and she can be very proud of me. <laughs> uh, Mackenzie, you say I'm not a star, but you're a big star in Turkey. Uh, you have a huge <laughs> fan base here. Do you have any message to Turkish fans? Oh, just thank you so much. You know, I've never been to Turkey, you know, but I really hope to go uh, one day soon too. Um, and thank you everyone for all the support. It's uh, it's a surprise for me, you know, that that everyone that a lot of people like me there and everything like that. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Good luck on Saturday, Mackenzie. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> thank you so much, Mackenzie. That is all the questions we had for you. We really appreciate the time. Perfect. Thank you so much.